The Devil's Toy Box is an urban legend that savvier horror fans will recognize as the inspiration for the infamous Lament configuration from Clive Barker's seminal Hellraiser series. Though, in reality, the titular box is not a toy at all, but rather a small room where the floor, the ceiling, and the walls are each composed of one giant mirror. According to the legend, if you stood inside the mirror room alone for too long, Supposedly, the devil would show up and steal your soul. In most versions of this story, he did so by flaying you alive. I mention all of this because, about two weeks ago, I got an email from an old friend, someone who was well-versed in my sordid past, asking if I could help out their younger sister, an 18-year-old girl who we'll call Erin, located in northern Louisiana. Like pretty much everywhere else, the place where Aaron grew up had its own annual haunted house attraction that went up every October. The attraction was called Farmer Graves Haunted Orchard, and in years past, it had been every bit as thrilling as the name suggested, which is to say, not very. So for the previous Halloween, the owners decided to spice things up by building several new interactive installations, which included a windowless shack called The Devil's Toy Box. This shack housed a small room composed of large, wall-sized mirrors. That's how Aaron heard it described, anyway. She had never been inside the toy box herself. Farmer Graves closed less than a week after opening, a result of the numerous people who had to be hospitalized after going inside the Devil's Toy Box attraction. Aaron didn't get a chance to try out the box for herself before the closure, but she had heard countless stories about it from her classmates at school. Apparently, no one could last longer than five minutes inside the room. There was even a large timer set up beside the building that showed the current occupant's length of stay under a second clock displaying the longest recorded time up to that point, which maxed out at just over four minutes before the attraction finally closed. The man who managed to last that long, Roger Heltz, age 52, father of three, had been reduced to a wide-eyed mute. To this day, he still hasn't said a word. One woman suffered a heart attack after just 90 seconds inside the box. A 17-year-old boy had to be dragged out, kicking and screaming. The boy was from a nearby parish and hadn't gone to Aaron's school, though her friend Celeste claimed her parents were friends with the boy's mom. They went to his funeral when he killed himself two weeks later. Whatever the truth of the matter, town officials were quick to act in getting Farmer Graves shut down. Of course, that didn't stop people from talking about the now infamous attraction, which they began to do almost immediately. For the next month or so, it seemed like the toy box was the only thing on anyone's mind. It had become the stuff of legend, and of course, it didn't take long for the local kids to start venturing over to the orchard at night to see the box for themselves. Farmer Graves' haunted orchard was owned by a middle-aged couple named Will and Darlene Sawyer. When the town council ordered the Sawyers to shut the place down, they were so pissed about the ruling, they left most of the attractions still standing, including the Devil's Toy Box. The actual orchard was on a plot of land located at the rear of the Sawyers' property and was only accessible by a narrow two-lane dirt road. One night, several seniors at Aaron's school snuck out to the Sawyers' property on a dare and claimed they found the toy box's entrance padlocked. But then Will Sawyer showed up out of nowhere and asked them if they wanted to go inside. Will's sudden arrival had startled the young men, but once they realized that he wasn't mad at them for trespassing, and in fact seemed genuinely happy to see them, the guys decided to take him up on his offer to have a go inside the box. Of course, they chickened out as soon as Will unlocked the door, and it seemed to swing open on its own, like a hungry mouth at the sight of food. That's how the rumors about midnight screenings of the Devil's Toy Box began to circulate. Most of the people who ventured out there afterwards claimed they encountered Will Sawyer after waiting beside the toy box for an unspecified length of time. A few even said they went inside the box, but these claims were always dismissed as bullshit. No one came out of that box that was coherent enough to talk about it. Last week, Aaron's boyfriend Troy went out there with some of his idiot friends and Aaron hadn't seen him since. His parents reported him missing, and Aaron even told the cops about the rumors surrounding the toy box. They barely seemed to be listening. 
Now, Aaron was going crazy worrying about Troy, and of course she was hoping I would be intrigued enough by her story to come with her to investigate Farmer Graves, because she was too scared to do so by herself. Aaron's location was only a three hour drive from New Orleans, so I asked my friend Jason and his girlfriend Gretchen to take the ride with me. This way, I wouldn't feel so weird about driving all the way to see an 18 year old girl I didn't know. We rolled into town at about 5 p.m. that Saturday, and I met up with Erin at the McDonald's, as she called it. I laughed when I first heard her say that and immediately felt like an asshole for thinking it was funny that Erin's town only had one McDonald's. Our meet and greet started out a little awkward on the account of all the stares we were getting from the rest of the restaurant. Then again, four strangers driving into town to meet a teenage girl at the McDonald's will do that. Thankfully, Gretchen was there to defuse the situation with one simple question. Did you make that? She was pointing at Aaron's backpack, which was actually a stuffed doll that I recognized as Lumpy Space Princess from the cartoon Adventure Time. Only most of the stuffing had been removed, and a purple pouch had been sewn into it that sealed closed via a matching purple zipper. The straps were made out of old, retro-looking seat belts. Aaron nodded, and Gretchen's jaw dropped. Oh my god, will you make me one? Will you make me two? Sure, as long as you provide the supplies. Deal. Gretchen was grinning ear to ear as she turned to face me. You have to help this girl so she can make me tiny, adorable backpacks. It was a little after 10 p.m. when we neared the end of the narrow dirt road that led to Farmer Graves' haunted orchard. We parked beside a tall wooden archway that designated the orchard's front entrance. I handed out flashlights from the small stash of them in my trunk, and then we started inside. The place looked about how I expected it to. A row of brightly colored plywood shacks lined the vacant field beside several rows of satsuma trees that had been covered in fake cobwebs and scary decorations. Each shack had a sign displaying the name of a different attraction. There was... Horn Toss, which, judging from the illustrations on its side, was a ring toss game where you tried to throw halos onto a demon's horns. Werewolf Bowling, which was anyone's guess. And my personal favorite, The Exorcist, which was a mounted squirt gun game that had several wood cutouts of Linda Blair's face as its targets. Cartoon water tanks were painted below each of the mounted squirt guns that were labeled Holy Water. The Devil's Toy Box was the last shack in the row. It was painted a bright fire engine red, and the door, which made up one entire wall of the small structure, was padlocked shut. Someone had stacked a dozen or so rusted folding chairs against the side of the toy box. Aaron grabbed one of the chairs and began to unfold it. Now we wait. How long? It varies, but hopefully not forever. Aaron motioned at the thick patch of wilderness to our left, and I turned to see a window glowing out there in the distant darkness. See it? That's the Sawyer house. They must know we're here. And that's a good thing? Gretchen's tone was tense, and she had a look on her face that she'd just realized how much she didn't want to be doing any of this. Before Aaron or I could answer, she turned to Jason and asked, Baby, will you walk me back to the car? Jason gave her an irritated look. What? Why? Because all of this just got too real. You knew what we were coming out here to do. I explained it to you in vivid detail. Jason, please? No, it's bullshit, Gretch. You do this every time. I know. This is the fucking Avengers sneak preview all over again. I miss everything cool. I'm sorry. She batted her eyes as she gave Jason an adorable frown Gretchen had honed over many years of getting her way. Jason let out an exasperated sigh, and I handed him the keys to the car. I'll be right back. I pulled out a chair and took a seat next to Aaron as we watched the beams from Jason and Gretchen's flashlights shrink off into the darkness. A thought came to me just then. As if this didn't already resemble an episode of Scooby-Doo, now we're splitting up. That's just asking for it. As soon as the words crossed my mind, we heard the crunching of approaching footsteps. Aaron and I stood in unison and exchanged a panicked glance before turning to face the forest border in the orchard. 
A middle-aged man with long, scraggly hair emerged out of the darkness and into the range of our flashlights. He was holding an electric lantern and wearing an open bathrobe over a dirty white undershirt and sweatpants. Will Sawyer was basically Vincent Price if he had starred in The Big Lebowski. He smiled and gave us a thumbs up. You here for the box? Sort of. Will gave her a look like he had no idea what that could possibly mean. Have you seen this guy? I held up the photo of Troy that Aaron had texted to my phone as Will started to approach us. He squinted at the picture. Hmm, maybe. When was that? A few weeks ago. He was the one that went in the box. Most won't go inside anymore. Lasted almost three minutes. Then he ran off screaming. (gasps) Aaron let out a sharp gasp. Ran off? Ran off where? Will pointed a thumb back at the dark patch of wilderness behind him. Into the fucking woods. Where do you think? I opened the door and he came shooting out, dick flapping naked from the waist down. (laughs) Had his boxers on his head and his pants wrapped around his neck like a scarf. (laughs) It was honestly pretty funny. Erin covered her mouth with her hands as her eyes began to well with tears. Will grinned. You want to see inside? We aren't here for the box. I stepped in front of Aaron and glared at Will. But it's so breathtaking. He gestured towards the toy box's wide door, which slowly swung open. The interior was shrouded in darkness, but I could see something vaguely human-shaped moving around inside the box. Yeah. Fuck that. Run. I grabbed Aaron by the arm and pulled her along with me as I sprinted away from the toy box. I could hear something chasing after us as we ran backward to the orchard's entrance. And I say, something, because it certainly didn't sound like a person. What I heard weren't footsteps, but rather one long scraping sound, accompanied by a wet breathing that reminded me of a panting dog. Thankfully, Jason heard me screaming just as he and Gretchen reached my car. They turned to spot me and Aaron running towards them with identical expressions of pants-shitting terror. Jason must have caught a glimpse of the thing chasing after us too because his own face went pale. He quickly unlocked my car and threw himself behind the wheel, screaming for Gretchen to get in. She hurried into the passenger seat, and the moment she buckled her seat belt, he started the engine and accelerated toward us, closing the gap in a matter of moments. Jason slammed on the brakes as he neared, and the car screeched to a halt inches away from us. I went to open the back passenger door, but it was locked. So was Aaron's side. I banged my fist on the window and pointed down at the locking mechanism. Jason mouthed, Oh, shit! He turned and scanned the door controls at the driver's side, looking for the master switch. The scraping sound was growing closer, but I refused to look back and banged on the window once more. The frustrated Jason finally leaned into the back seat and unlocked the door manually. But by then, it already had me. I can remember something dragging me back through the woods. I wasn't aware of much else beyond the vague impression that I had been stung by an insect with some kind of paralytic venom. I felt a rush of air hit my face as the door swung shut in front of me. Then the lights came on, and I realized where I was. Inside the Devil's Toy Box.